Classification of Economic Resources Now I am so full I doubt if I will be able to listen to you. <clears throat> well, I know how to keep you attentive. Try me. Have you ever been to Lake Nakuru to watch the flamingos? Not yet. Are you going there soon? Uh, will you take me with you? One question at a time, lady. And right now, I just feel like being the one asking the questions. Okay. Have you ever boarded a train? Nope, but I'm really looking forward to it. Last question. What would you like to be when you grow up? Well, a doctor would do just fine. But what's up with all these questions? Ha! Well, I have given you three perfect examples of the three categories of economic resources. Well, I must agree you have a perfect way of introducing a conversation. That is a professor in me. Are you still too full to listen? Nope, I am all ears. See? I know how to get your attention. Agreed. So, economic resources are three. Natural, man-made, and human resource. Mm -hmm. Where would you like us to begin? Natural resources. At least I know a little about it. And what do you think you know about natural resources? Well, I know that they are freely available in nature. Nobody is responsible for their existence. We call them gifts of nature. Yes, they include mountains, rivers, minerals, land, and so on. Others are natural forests, oceans, lakes, climate. So, Lake Nakuru is a natural resource. I see. But how is climate a natural resource? Well, there are some things that can only be produced as a result of good climate, such as farming. In this case, climate becomes a raw material for farming, hence a natural resource. Understood. So, natural resources can be used as they are, or for further production of goods and services. And it determines the way the people living around it live their lives. How? People living around lakes and rivers will tend to be fishermen. Those who live in cool and wet climate conditions will become farmers. And those living around mineral areas will become miners. That is clear. Good. Natural resources can be renewable or non-renewable. Of course, I know that renewable resources means that they restore themselves after use. Correct. They do not get depleted over time. Forests and solar energy can be good examples. Mm -hmm. For the non-renewable resources, once they have been used, they cannot be replaced. That is, they get depleted. Mineral resources make such good examples. Yeah. Once a mine is exhausted, a new one has to be looked for. Correct. Next, we have man-made resources. The ones also known as artificial resources. Yes. They have been made by humans to produce goods and services. Here, they include transport network, power generation plants, machinery, equipment, communication network, and so on. I get it. A train is a man-made resource. Yes, it is. The third one is the human resource, which refer to the mental and physical efforts provided by people to produce goods and services. I can think of doctors, nurses, teachers, engineers, fishermen. The list is endless. Indeed, it is endless. Human resources can be skilled, semi-skilled, or unskilled. I am listening. Before my retirement, I offered skilled labor. You know why? Why? Because I have been educated in my field and I have complete competence in my abilities. Mm. Anyone who is educated in their field of work offers skilled labor. So it is safe to say that teachers, doctors, engineers, and accountants are examples of skilled labor? Yes. There's nothing to add to that. Then we have the unskilled labor. Well... Unskilled is the opposite of skilled. Yes. So if skilled labor have the knowledge of what they're doing, then it means that unskilled labor does not have the knowledge for the production of goods and services. Well put. They have the basic education, but not gone to any college to acquire the relevant skills for such a profession. So, if I had a building being constructed for me, mm. and I contracted a mason to do it, then he comes with other people who will help mix the cement, carry building materials around, and so on. These people would be offering unskilled labor? Yes. You really are making my work easier. Then finally, we have semi-skilled labor. Now, before you 
pull the words right out of my mouth. This implies people who have basic knowledge of what they are doing, but are not equipped with a full array of skills. In English, please. Okay. Simply put, they have limited knowledge in what they are doing. Better. So, while working with economic resources, there are some very important issues that one has to deal with. Such as? Scarcity. Choice and opportunity cost. I have no idea what you're talking about. I bet you don't. But be my guest. We already said that economic resources are limited in supply. Remember? Yes, we did. And because of that, they cannot fully satisfy all the ones that we have. When there is a great demand for goods and services, and yet they are too limited to meet this demand, this is referred to as scarcity. And in this case, mm. then the consumers suffer because the goods or services are not enough. Correct. Unfortunately, sometimes scarcity is forced into the consumers. I think you lost me. Well, what I mean to say is that sometimes a shopkeeper or a supplier can hide goods from consumers, therefore causing an artificial shortage. Why would anyone do that? Hmm. For the hope that prices of goods will rise. Hence, they will be selling at a higher price. This is called hoarding. Oh no, this is bad. Yes, it is. And it's in fact illegal. Now, since economic resources are scarce and human wants are unlimited, one has to constantly choose which need they want to satisfy first. When I was young, hmm. I wanted so much to have a bicycle. But my dad told me that the money he had could only buy me clothes, food, and take me to school. Your dad had to make a choice between buying you a bicycle, which is a secondary want, and buying you things like clothes and food, which are basic. Well, I'm glad that he chose to give me what I needed the most. Yep. Now, when making choices, one has to forgo something, right? Right. My father had to forgo the bicycle to buy other things. So when an item is forgone so that another one is enjoyed, the cost of the forgone item is referred to as opportunity cost. So in my father's case, the cost of the bicycle that he had to forgo mm. to buy me clothes and food is the opportunity cost. Excellent. Ah, I am noticing something. What exactly? That scarcity choice and opportunity costs are all connected yes they are resources are always limited in supply while the demands are always high which prompts consumers to continuously make choices on which need to satisfy first and while making these choices mm. there is always that item that we forgo along the way and the cost of the forgone item is what is known as the opportunity cost yes now you know all about satisfaction of human wants yay production here i come production Yes, mm. production. Did you think you were going to get rid of me that easily? No way. You are stuck with me up to the end. Okay. <laughs>